All right, pop quiz hot shot. You have to solo over an A minor 11 to a C6 to a D major to a C major 7. How do you do it? Well, if you got any sort of like fear or trepidation or your eyes kind of glaze over from that question, this masterclass is for you. In this class, you're going to learn not only about chord formulas and intervals and triads and manipulating and expanding triads, you're going to learn how to find the right note for the right moment every single time, no matter what chord or chord progression is thrown your way. I'm really, really proud of this masterclass, and I want to give you the confidence that every guitar player really needs and deserves to master this instrument. All right, I have some bonus practice sessions linked below, and I'm really excited to show you this class. So with that being said, take a quick look at this video. It's about an hour long, and take your time, section by section. The ideas are solid. They're presented in ways that you are totally going to understand it, and it's going to change your guitar playing forever. I promise. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and we'll talk soon. Go check it out. All right. This lesson here has so much to unpack. Uh, it really does, and it's going to be a long lesson. Uh, we're going to open up a world of knowledge, confidence, guitar navigation, uh, music. <laughs> There's so much. And so we're just going to get started. Let's just talk about music theory first. Let's just talk about intervals. On your screen are popping up all the intervals that are known to us musicians. All right, I'm going to say them. All right, they are the one, the flat two, the two, the flat three, the three, the four, the sharp four or flat five, a five, sharp five or flat six, six, flat seven, seven. It goes back to a one, that's the octave, and then you get your uh, intervals over the octave, which are the flat nine, the nine, 11, sharp 11 flat 13 and 13. Now you probably read that and went, what in the heck, right? What if I told you that there was the most simplest idea on the guitar neck in the music, um, a compass that lets you see all these intervals like easily so that when you're playing with someone and they name a chord or you're writing something and you understand what chord you're using, you can easily find all these intervals and understand exactly where they are and put them into your playing. And that's what we're going to be studying today. And the more you study this, I'm telling you, dozens if not hundreds of different doors are going to pop open. So those intervals can be scary to people who A, don't study intervals or B, do study intervals and don't still don't understand what's happening. So there is a pivotal piece of information that I'm going to show you right now uh, to help you confidently navigate the guitar neck and understand how intervals work and write with them and all the stuff. It's this the guitar neck will open up. What we're going to do here is we are going to use we, we're going to use a triad. All right. Now, what is a triad? Now, specifically for this video for this definition, a triad is the building blocks of every chord. All right, and more specifically, it is a one, three, and five. We're using the major triad. Now, let's, I'll I'll show you everything. The major triad. All right, a one, three, and five. But the one, three, and five has to be played at the same time. It can't be a one, three, five. It has to be one, three, and five played at the same time. And that's the triad. Now, if you are a fan of the cage chord system, I will tell you there are approximately nine triads to remember, major triads, to remember on the guitar neck, and we'll talk about that. But for simple focus here, we're gonna be start, we're gonna start off with this triad right here, okay? And this triad here comes from, is actually buried within the E-shaped bar chord. You can see it's the D string, G string, and B string. This is the one, this is the three, this is the five. We're gonna use just these three strings. Again, it is inside this guy. So grab your guitars, make sure, on frets seven, six, and five, I'm playing an A chord. This is known as an A major triad. Now, the major triad is the most important triad. Yes, there are four triads that we learn about in music, the major, the minor, the augmented, and diminished, and we'll talk about that, but all those don't mean anything unless you have a major triad. Why? Well, let's talk about this. The word major, again, if you're a fan of my channel, you, you know, I'm regurgitating a lot here, uh, which is major means most important. The major, it doesn't mean happy, it means most important. This major triad is the most important triad in all of music. The building blocks of all of our chords is right here. Now, 
every time we move things around this triad, we can understand where intervals come from. What do I mean by that? Well, when you look at those intervals again, anything that has that lowercase b, that's a flat, or a sharp, you know, the pound sign, that means it is different from the major. That's what those things mean. It's either one less or one more, like around a major tri a major note. Anything that's just a clean number, like the one, the two, the three, the four, five, six, seven, those are major intervals. They're untouched, they are pristine. Here we have a one, a three, and a five. And what is so cool about the major triad is you can find every interval and play every interval. And so let me show you what I mean. We're gonna talk about intervals, then we're gonna talk about chord formulas. Just keep on following. Like grab a cup of coffee, sit down with your guitar, tell everyone in the house, okay, I'm watching a Stitch Method video. Uh, he tells me I gotta do this alone, just absorb it. That's what you're gonna do. And when you look, when you look at this one, three, and five, you can find every single interval you need. The first thing we're gonna look at is the one, the root note. When you look at this root note, you can find two other intervals very, very simply. Okay, the, the two, or sorry, the flat two, okay, is one fret up right here. If this is a one, this is a flat two. One more fret up is a two. So if I know where my one is, right here, I can easily find a flat two or a two, if I know where my one is. On the other side of it, a half step down is a major seventh. Two steps down from the one is a flat seven. So the intervals on guitar relating to the triad relating to the number one are the twos, flat two, two, and the sevens, one, uh, sorry, um, major seventh, flat seven. So, really quickly, if I need a chord that has a flat seven in it, it's right there, okay? Now, we'll get into chord formulas. Now here, right on this note, is the three, one, three. Let's talk about the intervals related to the three. One fret up from the three is a four. All right, two frets up from a three is a sharp four or flat five, All right? So if I have a chord that has a four in it, if I know where my three is, there's my four. On the way down, if I have a three, one, one um, excuse me, um, one fret behind three is a flat three, known as the minor third, you can also find a two, two frets down from the three, All right? So let's just go over that really quickly. You have a one here. One fret up from the one is a flat two. Two frets up from one is a two. One fret behind the one is a major seven. Two frets behind the one is a flat seven. Hopefully you can start to see where this is going. Trust me, it gets really good, but we gotta go through this. And that's why I'm saying, hey, just chill out and watch, okay? Have your guitar in hand. If you know where your threes are, well, I know where my four is and my sharp four or flat five. We'll talk about something in a second. If I know where my three is, I know that I have behind it a minor third and a two back here. Now, this is a five, one, three, five. This is the ultimate building block of music, the triad, okay? And here, or of chords, here's the five. Well, what what um, intervals, excuse me, are related to the five? Well, if you go two fret, if, sorry, if you go one fret down, you have your flat five, right? If you go two, uh, one fret up, you have your sharp five or flat six. And then if you go two frets up, you have your six. So let's talk about this for a second. Here's my five, flat five, all right? Here's my five, here's my sharp five or flat six, and here's my six. Now, believe it or not, I just named every interval in music theory right in front of you. Now, you might say, wait a second, I'll show you. What about those nines, elevens, and thirteens? And you might know this, but I'll show you in a couple seconds, but listen very carefully. One, flat two, two, my, uh, sorry, flat three, three, four, sharp four, Five, flat five, excuse me, five, uh, flat, flat six, and then we have six, and here's the seven and flat seven. There's the one, seven, flat seven. That was all of them. The nines, the elevens, and thirteens are just duplicates of the lower octaves that are even numbers. And what I mean by that is a nine is just a two. So if I need a nine, it's just a two. Now, a lot of people might put it up over the octave, like, well, you know, it should be one, three, five, and a seven, nine higher. And that's fine, but a nine is a nine and a two is a two. So if I need a, a nine, well, nine is just a two. You minus seven, that's what it is. My, nine minus seven is two. And so here's my nine. If I need a flat nine, I get, sorry, a flat two. If I need an 11, well, 11 minus seven is four. So an 11 is just a four. There it is. If I need a sharp 11, it's a sharp four. 
Mm. A 13 is just a 6. So if I need a, if I need a 6, 2 frets up from my 5 is a 6. If I need a flat 13, it's 1 fret up from my 5. Every interval can be found from your major triad. There they are. So if you can see your major triad and understand where the 1s, 3s, and 5s are, and then you can understand, well, what intervals are related to the 1? Well, they're the 2s and the 7s. What intervals are related to the 3? Well, the flat 3s, the 4s, and in some cases you can find the 2. You always can find the 2, 2 frets back. What intervals are related to the 5s? Well, that's the 6s and the flat 5. And I found you every interval. So now, that is the same for whatever triad shape you're using. If you're using this triad shape, if you're using this triad shape, if you're using this triad shape, or this triad shape, anything, this triad shape, this one, this one, okay? If you know where your one, threes, and fives are, and you understand how to find those intervals, well, if somebody's playing an A minor 11, and you start to know, well, what, what makes a minor 11 chord, and we'll talk all about this, we'll talk about the chord formulas, and you know it's a one, sorry, not like that. You know it's a one, a flat seven, sorry, a one, a minor third, I'll do the whole thing, one, minor third, five, flat seven, nine, and 11. Then you're like, oh, and I found that, by the way, from working with that major triad. Here's the one, the flat three is one fret behind the major third, five, flat seven is two frets down. I know I'm going fast, but we'll study this. Um, we need a nine, which is two frets up from the one. And an 11, which is a 4, which is one fret up from, from the uh, 3. So I have... So I have these notes now. And you can kind of mess around and create riffs because you understand where those intervals are next to the chord that uh, somebody else is playing. And, and we'll talk about that. That was rushed, but I want to show you the power of this. So, point of this section is if you know a major triad and you know what intervals are related to each member, the ones, the threes, and the fives, all right? And that's easy to, to discover. You just rewind this and just do it again. Then you'll become a powerhouse of improvisation, riff writing, being a companion player, and being confident. So in our next section here, and we will talk about more triad shapes, but in our next section, we're going to talk about chord formulas and how they relate to the major triad. All right, so stay tuned. We'll be back in a second. Go practice this stuff. No rush. Come back to this huge lesson anytime you want. All right, see you soon. So I know this section went by very fast, and I probably talked very quickly, but don't worry. We're going to cover ground, a lot of ground, as we go further through this lesson. I just wanted to show you that there's a core concept, and if you can understand the fact that we can navigate every single interval that you're going to come across from that one simple triad, you're in good shoes. So as long as you understood that idea, let's move forward. All right, so that past section right there was a doozy. I know, it was quick. I want to explain that intervals, okay, are the most important piece of music. I mean, they, they decide what things sound like. They, just, they decide how things are constructed, how things move. And so learning how intervals build chords is a, a really good skill to have. Now, it is not hard to do. I'm just letting you know it's not hard. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of keeping things as simple as possible, all right? And so... Uh, if you know that, then you're probably like, okay, let's do this. If you don't, then just trust me. We're going to talk about chord formulas. And a chord formula is a mathematical formula that builds certain chords. The first chord you come across is the major chord, which is just a one, three, and five of a major scale. Okay, that's the first, the third, and fifth. There it is. Right there. All right. Now, other chords have different math mathematical formulas. A minor chord is a one and a flat three and a five, okay? And if you notice, just to show you from our last little section, I took that three, I flattened it to the flat three, went from the major third to the flat three, I kept the one and the five, and there's my minor chord. All right, now, the idea of always seeing that major triad is very, very important because it's gonna help you understand how to build chords. So we're going to go through a couple of chord formulas, and I'm going to tell you this. 
The ones that I go over are just a few of the hundreds that are out there. But you can easily Google or Bing or search or whatever you're supposed to say now um, and say, you know, chord formula uh, and then hit the search and images and you're going to get charts. You're going to get charts of everything. And this lesson is just to show you how to understand that stuff. All right. So here are a couple chord formulas you want to talk about. We talk about major, we talk about minor. Let's talk about a major seventh. Now, anytime you have um, something that has a number after it, that's called a chord extension. Because what's happening is the major chord and the minor chord, those are both triads, three note chords. All right. But when I say major seventh, now we have something else. We have a major chord with a seventh on it. And what does that mean? Well, that that's a one, three, five, and a seven. And again, we're going to get to all this stuff here. All right. Um, and show you, but I want to go over this. So a major chord, a major seventh is a, is a one, three, five, and seven. A minor seventh is a one flat three, five, and a flat seven. Now, again, we're, we're, we're pointing back to our past, like kind of lesson. Well, what is the flat seven? Well, it's, you know, two frets down from a one. Um, you kind of want to understand that when you put a one, a flat three, a five, and a flat seven, you get a minor seventh chord. So studying these things and understanding where they're built from. So really, I'm going to kind of like, not start over, but let's just do it the way that I think I do if I was sitting uh, with a student in front of me, which I kind of am, all right? Let's just talk about all the chords that I kind of come across that are built off of a major triad. All right, you have major, which is one, three, and five, all right? And one thing you're going to see is a major six chord. It has that major triad in it, but we're adding the number six or the sixth interval. So it's the one, three, five, and a six. Major sevenths is the one, three, and five, because it's major, we said major seven, and a seventh, the seventh interval. Not a flat seven, a seven. Don't worry, you'll get this. Um, and that's pretty much what I come across. I have a little chart down here, I'm kind of perusing with my eyes, but you usually come, usually come across majors, major sixth, major seven. You might come across a major nine. And if you do, it's gonna be a one, a three, and a five, there's the major triad, a seven, and a nine. Now, again, you can Google these charts. I just wanna, want you to understand that these intervals, when you put them in certain orders, you get certain chords. Now, let's take a look at chords that are built off of the minor triad. Now, the minor triad itself is a, is a standalone triad. Um, again, there are four triads, major, minor, augmented, and diminished. And the minor triad is made from taking the major triad and flattening that three. And then it becomes its own thing. So a minor chord is a one, flat, three, and five. Anytime you have the word minor or little lowercase m in a chord, it's going to have that flat three. And you want to know that, that that little m or minor always means it has the flat three. So you know that you can start targeting that later as we go through this course. And so uh, we have a minor chord, right? A one, a flat three, and a five. Uh, you can have a minor seventh chord, one, flat three, five, and a flat seven. Now, flat seven, uh, going back to our first section, is two frets. <laughs> down from a one. At least we can kind of find this, all right? You want to know how to find them, and now we're talking about formulas. Um, you can do a minor, sorry, you can do a minor, I see, you know, if you're a fan of uh, Sean Daniels' channel, uh, the minor 11th chord. A minor 11th chord, those are chords, and actually, we're going to be doing a, a backing track that has that chord. Uh, they're popular, and if you look at that formula, it's huge. It's a one, flat three, a five, a flat seven, a nine, and an 11. It's like, what? It's crazy. One, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, and 11. A minor, a, sorry, minor 11th chord. And, you know, it's if you're looking at that and go, how do you solo over that? Or how do you get the best color out of that? You'll soon find out. All right, so we have minor, minor seven. So you can do a minor ninth, one, three, one, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, and a minor 11th. And so you're seeing here that we have these triads, a major triad, and chords that are built off of those, and then you have a minor triad, and chords that are built off of those. And then we have some other kind of chords that don't have, actually, uh, major thirds or minor thirds, and those are known as suspendeds. And in a video somewhere, somewhere in Stitch Method, I talk about a suspended chord is when we take the three, whether it's a minor third or three, any three, we take it out of the chord, it's been suspended, you're not allowed to come here, and either we add a two to the chord or four. So when you have a sus two chord, it's a one, two, and five. We've taken the three out. If you have a sus four chord, it's a one, four, and a five. Those intervals together. And that's the sus two or the sus four. Um, I'm trying to think of other chords. I'm just showing you the chord formulas give you the answer as to what notes, what intervals are really important to add to your melody.
Now this right here is what I want to say, and I've said this on my channel a lot, whatever is usually the last thing out of your mouth is probably one of the most important intervals or notes in that chord. If I said to you we're playing a minor ninth, it's like, okay, what was the last thing out of my mouth? Minor ninth, right? Or an A minor ninth, excuse me, we're playing an A minor nine. Those last two things, minor nine, minor, minor third, nine, that interval of the nine, right? If I say we're playing a major seventh chord, or sorry, a C major seven, okay, C's cool, right? But major seventh, okay, major means it has the major third and it has a seven in there. And the composer needs those notes to be in the melody. The only reason you're going to find uh, an add nine, a minor seven, a, a diminished, anything is because the composer, one of those notes is in the melody. If, I, if, if a composer can get away with majors and minors, they would, but sometimes if there's a dominant ninth chord in there, that nine is important to the sound of the song. So if I say we're playing a C nine or a C dominant nine, they're the same thing. Well, what does that mean? Okay, well, the dominant nine, dominant means it has a major third and a flat seven and a nine, and we'll talk about this more. But the key here is to study chord formulas. And, you know, I have a chart uh, for sale, of course, that's below. And if you're a Patreon member, that chart comes with it. It's a huge chart. It's going to have all the triads and all the movements and all the derivations and all the chord formulas. But you can, you can Google a chord formula and, and see what's there. But again, the most important thing out of your mouth, if I'm playing, you know, an E major 7, well, that major, the third, and that 7, those are important notes, those are important intervals, and i got to know how to locate them. And just like I showed you, if you know a major triad, you will be able to locate them. So this lesson here, this chapter here, however long it is, uh, and I hope, I hope that you've made it this far. You could be like, man, this is the most boring stuff in the world, but it's really powerful once you start to get it. Um, you know, is about understanding that uh, there are intervals of music. I've, list, I've listed them in the, in the first portion, um, and they're, they're popping up right here. And this is what makes music. And when you look at a chord formula, you can find those numbers. You know, you can find, oh, look, I have a 1, I have a flat 3, I have a 5, I have a flat 7, and I have a 9. Okay, that's what's in the chord. Now, to make a melody or to make a riff or to improvise or something over that chord, I really want to see those intervals. I really want to accent those intervals. And that's what's going to come next. In our next chapter, we're going to go back to using that simple, simple triad shape that I showed you. This guy right here. We're going to play some certain chords. We're going to, sh we're going to try to find the important intervals with what we did in, in section one and try to kind of create some melodies and show you how important it is to know a major triad, to know how to find the intervals around it, and to know your chord formulas. You'll be unstoppable. All right, see you soon. Okay. <laughs> So we talked about a basic uh, triad shape and major triad shape and how you can use it to find any interval you want. And then we talked about, hey, chord intervals are important. Understanding what makes a chord a chord uh, and giving you the special notes that you want to kind of like lean into in the melody uh, is important. All right. And now we're going to give you a brief example. And um, we're going to use, again, this simple triad shape right here. OK, this is an A major chord. And here, we're playing a little one, three, and five inside of it. Now, let's say, really quickly, I'm, you know, if somebody's playing an A major chord, <laughs> I mean, we have this. Right? Not, not that much fun, but we can create a melody with just these notes. And you can think about different ways to kind of like play those notes so that they, sorry. Anything, right? And those are those three notes, but kind of boring, I get it. But what if what if, what if the piano player wrote a song and, and it's an A major seven? Okay, A major seven like that. So it's two, one, two on the D, G, and D. And you're like, okay, I need to write a melody around the A major seven. And this is where it gets really important. You know, when you learn Oh, this was, uh, sorry, my, my toggle switch was uh, on treble. When you uh, learn guitar and you have this giant map in front of you, if you're really good, say you know your cage system, you can find all those, everything. When you go to write a melody, there's something in your mind that goes, wow, you know, I have all this, I have all this stuff to write a melody and, 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 and the, the arena gets big. 
And sometimes it's very, very hard to write a melody when you're facing a giant arena. But the reason I like kind of sticking now to the triad is because it keeps you together. It keeps you composed. You're, you know, you're not running around. You have all the information you need right at your fingertips. You don't need to be going, duh, 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 duh. you're going, okay, I'm going to write a melody that's tight. And so, and you'll see what I mean. I don't have to like stray. I don't have to stray. And we'll get into straying, but keeping your, your basic melody tight, or if you're jamming and you want to just improvise, instead of going like, I have to go everywhere, you can keep in one place and, and stay and, and, and has a purpose. You'll see. So the, if the keyboard player is playing an A major seven, let's get that on camera, right? And your job is just to come up with a simple melody. Well, okay, I have my major, my A major triad. And I'm gonna find, I'm always gonna find the A major triad, no matter what I'm doing, I'm gonna find the A major triad. Even if it's a minor chord right now, you'll see it in a few. All right, so I have my A major triad. It's based off of my E shape. We'll talk about all this soon. All right, well, where's, what's the chord formula for a major seven? Well, it's a one, three, five, and a seven. Okay, here's my one, my three, and my five. In that first section, I said, hey, the seven is one fret below the one. There it is. I now have these pieces. And these are all the pieces to a major seventh chord. All the pieces that are being played right here are being played here. So now, being able to sit for a couple seconds and try to come up with some different things with just those notes. Ooh, that was terrible. Let's try again. That was cool. Ah. Anything like that. There you go. Now you're writing melodies that are so tight on top of the chord. did was a one three five and a seven and the reason I did it is because the keyboard player well me uh, was playing an A major seven I said okay I found my triad and you can do this with other triads you can there's an A major triad here and you can find I'll show you like and, you, and we'll get there we'll get there but the idea is we're doing it right here all right so let's just say now that A major seven to a B minor all right I need a B minor Okay, just a B minor. Well, that will do a B minor seven, all right? So A major seven to a B minor seven. All right, so I gotta find, the first thing I do is just find my B major. Try it, okay? Now, minor, okay, it needs the minor third. Well, major third, minor third. Here's my, here's my minor triad. What's the chord formula for a minor seven? It's one, flat three, five, and flat seven. Well, here's my one, here's my flat three, here's my five. Where's my flat seven? Well, it's two frets below my one. So now these notes, one, flat three, five, flat seven. So I have my A major seven to my B minor seven. I should be able to play that better. And so now I have, now I have my quarter. No, I don't like that. Um, Sliding from flat seven to the one, minor third, sliding again to the five, and then doing this little, all right, there's the flat seven, there's the flat three, there's the five, and I'm hammering back to the one. All right, now we start to have little melodies based off the chords that are being played, but you're finding them by finding the major triad, turning it into the, the uh, intervals that you want, and then coming up with melodies. Was that a super strong melody? No, if I sat for another like five, 10 minutes, I, I get something that I think was like amazing. But you can see the power of this because whether you need to write something or whether you're, you're a fan of jam bands and, and, and there's a jam, and you're not soloing, you're just like, Like laying down a little groove, 
this helps out tremendously. And all I'm doing is finding the minor, sorry, finding the major triad, find the major chord, and then converting it, because the major chord is the compass. The major, excuse me, triad is the compass to deriving everything. All right. And so, a quick little section just to show you. All right, we're gonna do it with more chords and more everything. But this was just to show you if you know your chord formulas, and you can find a major triad. And you could, and, and somebody proposes, proposes, somebody writes a certain chord progression, you've written a certain chord progression, you want to lay down a melody, you want to design something go on top of it that's complementary, you don't, you don't have to sweat using the entire guitar neck, then this is going to help you kind of find the intervals, develop a melody with confidence, and start to see what's really going on in the guitar. So this is a shorter section, we're going to get to more stuff soon, but these first three sections are showing you the concepts of how everything moves. Now it's going to get a little bit deeper. I'm going to really kind of bite into it. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so, so what are we doing here? All right, so I think we had three sections, and I'm kind of like showing you, hey, this is how it works. So I wrote a, a cool chord progression, uh, I think. It's very Dave Matthews-esque. Um, and we are going to play the Tim Reynolds part, and we are going to try and write a melody using just this triad shape here so you can see how it works in full and we will get to other triad shapes but we're just kind of showing you how this works triads bring intervals chord formulas understanding what is an important note in the chord you're playing again it's usually the last thing out of your mouth so this chord progression is an A minor 11 to a C6 to a D major to a C major 7. And it sounds a little like this. Like, I think I screwed that up. Let's try again. Dave Matthews is like, hey, Tim, can you write a cool little melody over that? Got you. So let's look at um, where, like, we got to find an A minor 11, uh, you know, the, the, the intervals. Okay, so I'm going to use this triad. Again, it's a piece of the E shaped chord to find my A major triad. And I know that a lot of us can say, well, I can find the A minor just as easily. And that's fine. But, you know, it's simple just to start. So what's the chord formula for an A minor 11? Well, it's a 1. A flat three, so we take the major third, we flat note. A five, a flat seven, one, two frets behind the one. So we have one, flat three, five, flat seven. Oh, we need a nine. Now, just to let you know, you can find a nine one fret behind your flat two. You can also find your nine two frets up from your one. So it's, it's, it's what you feel. So right now we have the one, the flat three, the five, Here's the one, the flat seven is two frets behind the one. This is from the very first chapter in this thing. The nine is just a two, and a two is two frets up from the one. And we need an 11, which is a four. Remember, anything over those octaves, you just subtract seven. So 11 minus seven is four. Here's my major third. I know that the four is related to the major third. It's one fret up. So I have one, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, 11. So on the A minor 11, see. Uh, it happens quick. So, all right. So what do I do there? Well, I try to focus on important notes. I went one to the nine to the eleven minor third flat seven, and I'll keep it. Good. That's it. All right. Now we have a C six. And I'm going to find a C chord. Okay, here. Here's a C chord. Here's the triad. A C6. What are the intervals of a C6? Well, it's a 1, a 3, a 5, and a 6. And how do you find the 6? Well, a 6 is 2 frets up from the 5. All right? It's right here. So these are my notes. And, and you know, it's a C6. So I know that in my melody, the 6 is important. So let's see what we got here. Ah, no, 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 that wasn't right. Uh, there it was, okay. Something like that. Okay, cool. 
One, three, five, six, five, three, five. Okay, then a D major. So we find our D chord. Okay, what's the last thing in my mouth? D major. Okay, major third's important. I feel like I'm just gonna do a little like kind of little thing right there, just those three notes. Let's see what we got. I screwed up some of the lines, but you can hear it coming. Let me do it one more time. We go to a C major seven. Okay, back to a C. And what's a C major seven? Well, it's a one, three, five, and a seven. Here's a one, the three, and the five. I know that my seven is one fret behind my one. Right? There's that kind of thing I did earlier. Sorry. So I, I well, I don't know if I want to. Maybe. There we go. Seven. Let's just see what we got. triads of the chords to help navigate and find all the intervals I needed in the chord formulas and coming up with a melody. have to run around the fretboard. I didn't have to like go okay this and then like I have a okay uh, uh, you know C6 and do I have to, where do I go and you know it, it's all right there underneath your fingertips. So if you can understand how that was done right there you were in a very good position. To do this you got to know the major triad. You got to know how to find the intervals around that major triad of section one. You got to know chord formulas and again, knowing chord formulas by heart takes time, but you can have a chord formula sheet in front of you, and you'll learn. You'll learn very quickly. You know that what's in what is in what when you have that sheet in front of you. Then being able to find those triads uh, of the chords, the bass chords, and then manipulate them into the proper intervals, and then move them if necessary. Now, we did that with just one triad shape. There are nine total on the neck. If you are familiar with the cage chord system, watch this video here. It's going to make it so much easier because each cage chord has triads in it. They all do. They all do. Trust me. You know, um, we're going to pick a couple more of them. Uh, in the Patreon practice sessions, we will cover all of them and we will do tons of different chord progressions so that you can do, you can practice all this up and down the neck and make it really easy on yourself. Uh, but to save us time in the concept, you know, if you can find your triads, do it. Um, but we're going to pick maybe like two or three maybe more different uh, easy to find triad shapes and I'll show you how to get there and then use maybe the same chord progression or maybe a different chord progression uh, with you know the knowledge that we have showing you that you could really uh, understand a lot about the guitar neck and this, this lesson opens up a lot of doors trust me if you're thinking like oh wait can I do this can I do this the answer is yes uh, hopefully you're enjoying this stay tuned more to come So now to show you what I mean here, um, I have one page of this giant chart that I have, um, and we're going to put it up on the screen and we're going to take a look at stuff, and I'm also going to show you the guitar. So we're going to start again with this major triad. This again comes from the E major shape chord from the cage chord system. Here it is. So if you look at the first 
um, graphic top left, you can see the 1, 3, and 5. Above the chord is the chord name, and below it is the chord formula. And again, let's take a look at the next one, which is the major 7th, all right? We can take a look and see that the, the chord formula is a 1, 3, 5, and a 7. And here's the 1, here's the 3, here's the 5, and then the 7 is 1 fret below the uh, 1. So here is... Now we have the arpeggio of the major 7th chord from using a triad. Uh, next we have the major 6th chord, which is a 1, 3, 5, and 6. And so we have the 1, 3, 5, and you can see the 6 is 2 frets up from the 5. It always is. So here is a major 6th arpeggio. All right, now we're going to look at uh, a minor arpeggio. The next one is the minor. So how do you look at the minor? Well, here's the major, and the minor is a 1, flat 3, and 5. And you can see that we just take the major 3rd and flatten it. You can see in the graphic where I ghosted that kind of like a major 3rd. You can see it's very, very light. And so you can see that major 3rd, you can see we're lowering it a uh, half step, and now we have a minor 3rd uh, triad. But here's a minor 3rd arpeggio. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of scroll down on my screen so I can keep everything organized. All right. And so the next one we have is the minor seventh um, chord formula, which is one flat three, five, and flat seven. And you can see here that we have the one, the flat three, and the five just from the chord before. And the flat seven is two frets below the one. So we have one, flat three, five, flat seven. And all these, again, are related to the major triad, we are manipulating the major triad to form the chord formula knowing the relationships of all the intervals. One, flat three, five, flat seven. All right, so just showing you how to use the charts. And now we have a minor 11th. Uh, the minor 11th, excuse me, is um, an interesting chord uh, arpeggio. You can use this, you can use a minor 7th, you can use a minor 9, you can use a minor 11th for any minor chord, uh, just to let you know, uh, you know, if you want to extend it out. But um, it's an interesting arpeggio or interesting chord formula. If you look, it's 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 9, and 11. So we got to take that ma major triad. we got to spot all those guys. So how do you do it? Well, we have the 1, we need a flat 3. There it is, 1, flat 3, 5. There's that minor triad. And now we need the flat 7. Well, it's two frets, uh, two frets behind the 1. There it is, 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7. Now, on this graphic, you can see that I have the 2, 1 fret below the minor 3rd. You can find it there if you like to. Some people like to say, well, I can find the 2, 1 fret below the minor 3rd. But, you know, I'm keeping it in, in terms of the major triad. And I like to find it one, two frets up from the 1. Now, uh, this is this is a 9, which is also a 2. 2s and 9s are the same intervals. So you have 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 9. And then you have uh, the um, 11, which is a 4, which is 1, 3, 4. The 4 and 11 are the same interval. Remember, anything that's a 9, 11, sorry, yeah, 9, 11, or 13, you subtract 7 from, and you can find... Uh, what interval it is. And so the 11 is a 4, and that relates to our major 3rd. It's 1 fret up from a major 3rd. So we have 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 11, and... Sorry, uh, <laughs> let me do that again. 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 9, and 11. Yeah. Right? You can kind of really have fun with that one. All right, so the next on the sheet is the dominant chords. We have dominant seventh, and that's really easy. That comes from major triad. The major triad is still there. We have one, three, five, and, and a flat seven. All right, it's right there. All right, now we have the dominant ninth. Now remember, dominance means we have a major third and a flat seven. So a dominant 9 is a 1, 3, and 5, and it is a flat 7, and it is a 9. Now, you can have it here or here. And what I mean by that is two frets up from a 1, or we can say two frets back from a major 3rd. It, it's up to you, however, however you want to see it. You can lock both of them in in your mind. You can lock 1, but you have 1, 3, 5, flat 7, and the 9. So if somebody's playing, let's see, an A9, like, uh, oh my gosh, if I can, oh yeah. 
voll geil. Scrub too much. You can kind of like mess around with that arpeggio that you found from the major triad. And then after that, we have, I'm going to show you, we have um, our augmented, which is a, a, a standard triad, which is a one, three, sharp five. So you take the five and sharpen it. All right. And that's a tense chord. You can find it in some songs, but it's rare. It, you know, sometimes it's. Sometimes it just moves between chords. Diminished is a one, flat three, and a flat five. So you take the one, so one's the same, three, you flatten. Here's the five, flatten that. So this is an A diminished chord, or A diminished triad. Now, we get into our sus chords, sus two. If you remember from, I forgot which chapter, we take the three out in sus chords. It's been suspended, we throw it out. And so you have the one, and it's like, well, where's that two? Oh yeah, well, here's the three. Now I gotta play this all at the same time, so I'm gonna try and come off the three because I can't play the one and the two on the same string at the same time. So one, three, okay, that's two frets down. There it is there, and the five. And that's a sus two chord, it's A sus two, right? And the final one on the chart, we have the A sus four. And so that's a one, a four, which is related to the three, it's up one fret and the five. So A sus four, and your A sus two, and your A major. All right, and so I just wanna show you, if you know that you know that major triad, and you know some chord formulas, and you know how to find those intervals like we're talking about, you're, you're gonna become unstoppable in riff writing, improvising, and seeing the guitar neck. So just a brief section just to show you how to kind of like do it all from the charts and also in your mind. Take your time with this, like take your time. This isn't supposed to be like, aha, uh -huh, you're done. You should be going like, excuse me, you should be going, okay, that makes sense, but I really gotta study that, all right? And I wanna do that, and that's how you should feel. And so take your time with this. All right, next section coming. All right, so hopefully I'm proving my point that if you know chord formulas and you know a major triad, you can find any intervals you want and you can play the right notes for the right moment, whether it be in riff writing or even soloing, improvising, anything. All right, so I wanna show you all the little triad combinations. Now, again, um, my Patreon practice sessions are gonna go over every single one in great detail with different backing tracks. So if you're intrigued, check out the Patreon links. Uh, they'll be linked below the practice sessions. All right, but I want to show you really quickly all the triads so you understand. And I'm going to use them uh, against the cage chord system, which I think is the most powerful uh, system there is on guitar. And so if I were to start with the C chord here, the first triad you come across is the, is the thicker side of the C shape, which is one, three, five, just these guys. That's one major triad shape. Get your hands on that. The next triad shape, believe it or not, starts on the middle finger. It's just an inversion of it. It's, it's now D string, G string, B string. This is the three, this is the five, this is the one. So here you have one, three, five, play it together. That's a triad. Here is three, five, one. That's a triad, just a different inversion. All right, and then the C shape connects to the A shape. And here we have this thick, like middle A shape triad, which is the one, three, and five here. Not the whole chord, just this guy. Then we have also this thin A shape chord. All right, which is one, three, five here. So you have this set, you have this set, you have this guy here, but just this set here. Remember, triad has to be played all at the same time. You have this guy here. These are all C's, these are all C major triads. And each one of these so far, you can, you can absolutely find any intervals you want because everything is related to the one, three, and five. Now the A shape connects to the G shape. The G shape itself really has this thick one right here, one, three, five. It shares the A shape one in the middle, so that one we don't have to worry about, but there it is there. The E shape, sorry, the G shape connects to the E shape, right? These are all C chords. And so we have the one we talked about, which is like the middle one, but we have a thicker one here, all right? 
This is the five, one, three together. Then you have the one, three, five. Then you have this guy here, which is a three, five, one. So the E shape has three different triads in it, right? It has the thick one, it has the middle one, it has the thin one. All right, then the E shape connects to the D shape, and then with the D shape we have this guy here. And these are all the triads that you're gonna find on the guitar uh, when played, or major triads, excuse me, when, when played through the cage chord system, or all of them really. So how many are there? There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. There's nine groups of triads that are playable at the same time. And so, let's pick another one of those. We'll throw the chart up, and what we'll try and do is take that Dave Matthews band back and track thing that I kind of made, and see if now, not if we can just write something in a different spot, but if we can add to what we already wrote using a different triad as well, all right? So, let's try um, this one, this D-shaped triad. I'm gonna bring up the chart on my behalf. Uh, just so I don't screw up too much, even though I know it, it's just like, you know, when you're teaching, it's like patting your belly and rubbing your head or whatever it is. All right, so we have this major, this major triad, the D shape, all right? And so what we're gonna do here is it starts on an A minor 11. So you take this shape until you find your A. Now, if you don't know this stuff, of course the cage chord system is gonna help you, but I know there's an A chord right here, so, uh, 9, 10, 9. This is my A. But I need a minor 11th, okay? And so those intervals here are gonna be, let's see, one, I need a flat three, so. So one, flat three, uh, five, flat seven is two frets always behind the one, nine, two frets up from the one, and the 11 is, like here's, here's the three, is one fret up. So we have one, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, and 11. So now before we had something like this, like a, something like that. And now, you know, there it is. I'm just kind of like, I just kind of went into a, the minor thing, but Right there, I used a little bit of the A shape, uh, so the E shape one we used prior in this lesson, but I cut it in half, and I went in. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, perfect. Then, excuse me, I'm gonna take a sip of my iced latte. Hmm. Sorry, very unprofessional, but my lips are dry. All right, so. Cool. All right, now a C6. And we have the C6 here, we have the one, three, five, and the six here. But now we have a C here, and it's like, well, we gotta find the C6. Well, we have the one, three, five, and remember the six is two frets up from the five. So there it is. So before we had, and now we have this. Well, these guys are the same. So I might just do that. That's from the first one. And then do the sliding six. I can see the intervals right there. So let's just see what we got if I remember it. Let's see. Cool. So. Then to the C6, I used half the original line. Slide into the other triad. But this time I just used uh, a little piece like sliding six type because this six here is the same here. It wasn't gonna add anything new, I already hit it. All right. All right, now D major um, is the next chord, and, and that D chord is up here. So, let's see. I might just do something like that. I did something like this you know, on the original part. And I might just slide in again, like that sliding six feel, but then really tag the full chord. Let's see what it sounds like. Good. Okay. 
perfect. And then um, we need a C, um, a C major seven. So here's a C chord. Again, from the cage chord system, C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape, there's the D shape. All right, and um, I need a major seven. So I have the one, sorry, the one, the three, the five, and the major seven is a one, three, five, seven. And there's that major seventh. And before I did something like, uh, and I might, there it is. A little bang somewhere. And that's, that's the root note to the major seven. Let's see. I'm kind of rushing through that, but you can see that now it's like, whoa, like I, I can see those triads. I can see and find those special intervals. And it's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool when you understand that, you know, the triad is the, is the DNA, the ultimate building block of every chord, the major triad really. And then we start warping it. And if you understand chord formulas, you can, of course, find all those intervals and you can start writing little riffs. <laughs> If somebody came to me with the chord progression that was D minor, sorry, A minor 11 to C6 to D major to C major 7, and if I didn't know this stuff, I'd be like, okay, you know, <laughs> all right, let me see this. And so hopefully this is helping you, all right? This is a, this is a long, long class. Now, again, I can sit and bore you with all this stuff, but I want to show you that this works. If you get the charts below, if you get them, you'll see that every every triad is laid out. It's against the cage chord system, and you can do this. You can do this in different different triad groups. Okay, it's all the same. If this is a root, this is a one. If this is a three, this is a four. If this is a five, this is a six. It never changes. All right. In my Patreon practice sessions, I'll be going over all of them with uh, I think a different chord progression as well, showing you that you know you can add color. You can always hit the right note. You can always give the song something else and you can really start to like learn how intervals work and play things that you wouldn't have played before if you saw the guitar a different way, All right? This isn't necessarily the cage chord system. I'm just showing you the triads that, you know, I, I see them laying against the cage chord system, but the more you can look at your triads, the more you can look at the cage chord system and you can put this stuff in your solos. I mean, really, you can be soloing in a pentatonic scale and then hit some chord tones based off this stuff and just pop the flavor. And so uh, I think I think we'll leave it at this. You know, I think the video is long enough. How, how long is this video? Oh, it's just about an hour. All right. And so um, I, I want you to enjoy this. And, you know, if you can find your triads and, and you can find those chord formulas and, and start, you know, manipulating them. It, it's a joy because you start playing things you haven't played before. I'll stop talking. Thank you so much for being here on a very odd episode of Stitch Method. I hope that you, you picked up what I'm putting down. Let me know in the comments. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.